Hello, welcome to Saucy Cat. My name is Connor and Zoe and I have been vegetarian for around three years now and we often get a lot of questions asked about it. So today I'd like to share with you the ins and outs of being vegetarian. So let's dive in. So let's start off with the basics. What does it even mean to be vegetarian? Well, long story short, a vegetarian doesn't eat meat. There are plenty of subsets of vegetarianism that specify even further what goes on your plate. For example, veganism, which eliminates all animal products. This includes dairy products such as milk and cheese, also no eggs, and for some vegans, no honey. On the other hand, we have options like pescatarian, which the eater can still eat fish and seafood, but they'll choose to omit red meat and poultry. There are dozens of variations to choose from in order to fit your own personal interest, whether they be for health, moral, or cultural influences. Which brings me to my next point. When starting a lifestyle change like this, a lot of people ask, why? What exactly are the benefits in the going plant-based? Well, that too varies from person to person. Some people do it for health concerns in the physical body, moral reasons, environmental impact. I won't go into any stats or debates here, but feel free to do your own research online. Now I want to go over some common misconceptions and set the record straight for you. I can honestly say I don't know the last time I had a salad. You can still have filling, flavorful, and exciting meals without having the meat. Things like pizza, spaghetti, casserole, Chinese food, Mexican food, the list goes on and on. Taking the meat out of a dish doesn't limit the kind of meals that you can enjoy. Eating plant-based is only boring and bland if you make it so. Meat is not the only way to get protein, and no, I'm not talking about chalky protein shakes. Real foods like lentils, beans, nuts, peanut butter, yogurt, eggs. Protein is everywhere, it just takes a quick Google search. As for iron, broccoli, spinach, and other dark greens are there for that. When it comes to vitamins, however, the only one we have to worry about is B12, which is usually found in meat and other dairy products. But a simple vegan tablet can fix that. The average price of a pound of ground beef is four US dollars. The average price of a pound of lentils, one dollar. Common meat substitutes like beans and lentils are some of the cheapest things out there and have an incredibly long shelf life. While going cold turkey and cutting out all meat entirely is definitely an option, it can be an overwhelming and confusing change. So my first tip is to start out small. Start off with just one plant-based meal a week then go up to two, then go into a full day of only plant-based meals, then bring it into a week, and so on and so forth until you're ready to make the jump. Other options include cutting out one specific kind of meat, like beef or chicken. There are many online resources out there to help with finding recipes and other tips and tricks. Speaking of which, After being a vegetarian for around three years now, I've picked up on a couple tips and tricks that'll help make the change a little easier. Think about the meal you want and why you want it. Zoe used to love her sweet and sour chicken, but then she realized it wasn't the chicken that she was missing, it was the sauce. So we started putting that sauce at everything and that stopped her craving for chicken. I used to love myself a good burger, but I realized it wasn't necessarily the meat that I was missing, it was more so something sandwich style with all my favorite toppings. Once I found that out, I found some vegan burger patties and I absolutely love them. Look deeper as to what it is you're craving and see if there's any ways you can satisfy that craving. I've already mentioned vegan burgers, but there are plenty of other meat substitutes out there, such as vegan Italian sausage, chicken nuggets, or even tuna. While Zoe and I prefer to be full veggie mode, these fake meats can help satisfy certain cravings or help adapt recipes a little easier. Just a heads up though, these fake meats won't have the exact same taste and texture as real meat, so don't expect it to taste exactly the same. Spaghetti and meatballs? Omit the meatballs. Beef tacos? Try lentils. Chicken noodle soup? Vegetable broth. Take the recipes you already love and just make a small change to them to make them vegetarian. Ease your way into change without leaving your favorites behind. The familiarity will help make the change less scary. Complete 180 from that last tip, try new things. You can't constantly compare lentil tacos to beef tacos if you've never had tacos in the first place. 
Trying new things is not only fun and adventurous, but it also helps you enjoy something for what it is. Accidents and mistakes are just a normal part of life. So if you find out you accidentally ate something that doesn't fit your lifestyle, it's not the end of the world. Just learn from it and move on. Of course, a great way of double checking that is to check your labels and to research your ingredients. Some common ones to look out for are gelatin, bone meal, and cheese enzymes. Gelatin, which is derived from bone, is the key component to a lot of candies as well as jello. Bone meal is often added to flours and sugars to act as a whitening agent. And a lot of cheeses are made using animal-based enzymes, making them not vegetarian. Do your own research to see if the products and brands you use fit your lifestyle choices. The definition of vegetarian is not absolute. Many Asian countries, for example, will consider seafood vegetarian and will label foods containing it as such. So check your labels and do your research. Any change can be hard, but doing it alone makes it even harder. We have several friends and family members who are vegetarian and vegan, and we often discuss different recipes and ingredients and overall just bond over our shared lifestyle. Having the sense of community helps with motivation and support. I want you to do whatever makes you happiest, and if that means giving this lifestyle a try, I hope this video helps. If you have any questions, or if I've missed anything important, let me know in the comments down below. Like and subscribe for future vegetarian and vegan meals, and we'll see you next time on Saucy Cat. On the other hand, we have options like pescatarian, which the eater can still eat things like fish and seafood, but will omit other stuff.